You know, when I was uh, a few years married, we had maybe uh, Kate, maybe Emma, maybe two kids. Um, I got my wedding band tattooed on my finger. Uh, I used to play with my wedding ring all the time like ridiculously, right? I would flip it around in my fingers in meetings. I'd take it off and I'd spin it on a table as I'm having a meeting with people. I would take it off when I cooked and worked out or worked in the yard. At times, my kids would find my wedding ring somewhere in the house and they would bring it to me and they'd say, Dad, you need this. And so somewhere along the way, we used to joke, I should just get that thing tattooed on because then I never have to worry about taking it off and leaving it somewhere. And then sure enough, the day came when I actually lost it for a period of a few weeks. I'm like, I guess we're getting it tattooed on. Might as well just do that instead of going to get another wedding band. So I got that tattooed on and I remember going to the tattoo parlor that day and that was the only thing I'd ever had done. And I walked out of the tattoo parlor, Becky was with me, and the very first thing I said was, you know, if I were to get another one, like never before that moment in my life had I really planned out like having any tattoos at all, And the first thing in my head as I walk out is like, if I were to get another one, what would I get? And I was already planning. And so the next tattoo I got was a line of text on my bicep right here, which hurt like crazy. I've never cringed in pain more in my life than that thing. And it simply says, only in surrender am I truly free. It meant a lot to me about like how my life is supposed to be lived for God is in surrender to him. And then somewhere along the way, I saw somebody have a tattoo on the forearm right here. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. Because you can look down and see it all the time. And I started to think about, if I could get one more thing tattooed there, what would it be? Uh, And many of you have probably seen it. I have a, a heart on my sleeve. And it's a broken heart. And it's a reminder to me that God's heart breaks for the world. And so should mine. So should mine. So should ours. And unfortunately, what has happened in the church over the last 15, 20 years is that the church is known more for being judgmental towards the world. And getting in fights with one another in the church and being judgmental towards each other in the church rather than allowing our hearts to break for the world around us. Like Paul is in anguish in this passage for his people. He is in anguish that he knows people by name who don't know Jesus. And it's tearing him up inside. Who are your people? And how do you feel about them? Does your heart break for the world? We live in a world, right? If the Roman church is divided, we live in a world where churches are divided more than ever because we live in a country that is divided more than ever. And we're going into what seems like another highly contested election season. Sure, it's two years away, but you know, it's going to ramp up from here on out. We're going to be all sick of politics by the time we hit 2024. And what's going to happen? Things are just going to get stirred. Things are going to get stirred in the world. There's going to be more things that stir us up. That get us all riled up. And we have an option. Are we going to be judgmental towards the world? Judgmental towards one another? Or allow our hearts to break for those who are in need? See, what Paul is saying here is that the thing that should motivate us to engage in God's mission in the world is mercy. God's mercy.